All right, YouTube. Here is um, a quick fix problem for power failures. Anything that's susceptible to uh, being screwed with when the power fails or flashes goes off, comes back on, um, can be fixed with this simple setup. So this is my pellet stove. Heats my house. Computerized. Um, if the power flickers for even just a fraction of a second, the computer in it, just like your home computer, has to restart. Well, for this to restart, you have to go through a process that you have to put it through. So then if I'm not around, there's no heat in the house. So we live in a rural area where the power's out frequently. It's out for one minute, 30 seconds, maybe eight or 10 hours. And it happens multiple times a year. Um, storms take the power out, um, winter, summer, and this fix I have doesn't just need to be for a pellet stove. It can be for your refrigerator. It can be for your deep freezer. It can be for all kinds of different things. So, <clears throat> as you can see here, I'll walk around to the back side to where I've got this set up. And it's a simple hack that I have. This is an APC-1000 um, US UPS. And the onboard batteries that these come with are very, very small smaller than oh, the size of a tennis ball or softball, something like that, very small. Um, they'll only run the unit that's plugged into it, depending on what it draws, for five, maybe ten minutes. So what I did was I went into the unit very simply, and I took the power leads, uh, the positive and the negative, and I just extended them with 10 gauge stranded copper coated uh, cable out to a set of deep cycle batteries. Now, the set of batteries I used are Group 31 deep cycles. They're actually dual purpose, they're for your boats. Uh, I got these at Fleet Farm for I think $70 a piece. Um, they are uh, 180 reserve crank at 215 minutes at 23 amps. So it's a MDP 900. Um, like I said, Group 31 DP, dual purpose, so it's still a lead sponge plate, it's not a complete deep cycle battery. Um, you would be better off using four 6 volt batteries with a solid lead plate um, versus lead sponge. Um, your car batteries are even um, more porous than the plate, it's uh, uh, extremely spongy. That's what allows the um, battery to um, put out its power very fast and allows um, for uh, the high cold cranking amps. Uh, the more of a deep cycle battery is, the less the cold cranking amps is, but it's better at being discharged and recharged. So what I'm going to simulate here is a power failure. You can see the unit here that's set to watts right now. That's what we're drawing off the wall to run this unit. Now, <clears throat> it's varying because I've got two fans, a combustion fan and a um, room fan that run all the time but I have a stir rod motor and a uh, fuel feed auger motor that run intermittently. <clears throat> so it's a varying um, load. But you can see kind of what it does. And there it is in amps drawn. Oh, it looks like it high side was two and a half there for a second. But um, so with this little handy gadget, which I love this thing, I use all the time. Uh, it's a kilowatt meter, P3 from, you can just Google it, you'll find it. But um, I've got here an amp clamp set up, and that's on the positive lead going over the battery. So we can see right now this unit is not charging the battery, and it's not using the battery. <clears throat> it's just sitting here. The batteries are completely stable, because this unit does charge the batteries. And you can see that our voltage is at 27.34. This is a 24 volt system. So that's fully charged and floating. <clears throat> so the batteries are maintained. So you never have to do anything with the batteries. This unit will charge the batteries after a power failure and you discharge the batteries. When the power returns, it automatically recharges the batteries and has them sitting there waiting for the next time that uh, the power is to fail again. <clears throat> and I just simply took and I wrote down the voltages and at what percentage the battery is um, for my own so I can just come down here and check it when I know the power is out. This unit the way it's set up right now 
<clears throat> I can run this stove for 24 hours um, pretty easy and <clears throat> in the summer I run it on my refrigerator and deep freezer which it'll run for almost 48 hours um, depending on the temperature of the house and how full the appliances are so I'm going to simulate a power failure here and you're going to be able to see the amperage coming out of the battery and running the unit and then you're going to see the voltage drop right here so we'll be able to monitor this stuff and you'll be able to see here I'm going to simulate it here so there we go no draw off the wall outlet our audible alarm to tell us that we've got no power powers out for whatever reason and that will tone every so often I wish it had a silent mode but it doesn't but you can see now we're drawing 7.5 amps <clears throat> it's going to be a varying load once again so as you can see here I'll show you the voltage 26 and dropping now it's going to drop relatively fast right away because we're still above 100% in the battery charge so 25.4 is 100%. So it's going to drop real quick down to 25.4 and it'll probably drop down to 25.0 something like that to a working voltage where the batteries are under load and it'll sit there for a long time. Even though it's, the voltage tells you yeah, it's at 85%, it's actually a lot better. If you were to pull the load off the batteries you'd see the voltage return right away. So. <clears throat> As we watch this now, we're running almost as high as 9 amps there. But once again, it's a varying load. So it's dependent on if both augers run at the same time with both fans, then you see it jump up that high. But um, like I said, this will run for about 24 hours. I haven't done the math. It may run longer. I don't know. I've run it for 10 or 12 hours with no power, and the batteries were you know probably 80 percent still um, when I removed the load from the batteries so what I'm going to show you now is you'll see that that's volt or amperage coming off the batteries at 5.6 jumping up to 8 now we've hardly touched our batteries so it's going to go back to fully charge really fast but I'm going to put the power back to the unit now it automatically switches back to the wall no interruption in the unit ever and you can see now, see the negative symbol here? On the far side, it's hard to see. But now it's showing you that it's charging the batteries at 3.7 amps. So we're putting 3.7, 3.6 amps back into the batteries. The flow is going reverse now, it's going back into the batteries. And as you can see here, our voltage is climbing again. So the unit is returning the batteries to a full state of charge and gonna float and maintain the batteries and keep the batteries ready for the next power outage. So there's nothing to do as far as maintenance is concerned besides those batteries you could check the water level on and make sure there's no corrosion growing on your terminals every so often, every six months or so. <clears throat> Completely standalone, I don't do anything. Very simple. You have the cost of the APC and if you can get one used with bad batteries or if you can um, just buy one, whatever. You know, this is a thousand watt unit, so this unit draws as much as 200, 250 watts. So about two and a half hundred watt light bulbs running all the time on the high side. So I could run, you know, four of these units off of that before it'd be at its breaking point. So I know I can plug my deep freezer in to this unit as well, and I could run both of them at the same time if I had to. So if you're, say, in an apartment, um, you don't have room for a generator, um, you just can't run a generator um, because of ordinances or um, space constriction, something like that. This can sit right in your apartment. Now, if you're worried about a lead acid battery venting or something, which these don't really, um, you could put a plastic boot tray under it. Um, you could use a gel cell. Um, those don't vent into an interior. They're a sealed unit. You could use an AGM battery as well, um, but you'd have to check and see if the APC unit would work with those other kinds of batteries. This is designed for a lead acid battery. But as you can see, we're down to three amps going back into our batteries, 2.9. So that's just gonna continue to drop as our voltage climbs back to where it should be. 
and then you'll see it just taper right off and it costs nothing to operate. The unit sits here, the batteries don't use anything, and the power's coming out of the wall outlet here, going straight to my appliance. It's just going through this. So it doesn't cost anything to operate. The thing just sits here. It takes up space on the floor. That's all it does. Very cheap, very simple um, hack to a, a good appliance. And this could also be used for um, uh, its corrected sine wave. It's for your computers, so you can run medical equipment on it. Now say, you know, grandpa has a oxygen machine or a kid needs a nebulizer or whatever you have the ability to run that for an extended duration now if i put two more batteries in the series here <clears throat> and i kept it at 24 volts i'm going to double my capacity and instead of running this unit for a day i'm going to run it for two days and i could just keep adding batteries though the bigger the battery the more capacity so it's a very simple setup two 12 volt batteries and I just extended the wires coming out of the APC. I just punched a little hole in the case right there so you can see that. Right through the cooling fins for the unit. And uh, very, very simple hack, very quick, and um, very effective. Have a good day, YouTube. Okay, one more thing that I wanted to discuss real quick I forgot to put in here. I've been asked, well, why don't you just go with a battery charger to your battery and from your battery to an inverter and from your inverter over to your appliance well that's a good question uh, the reason that I don't do that is you would be operating a battery charger under a 10 or 12 amp load constantly so you'd have conversion from AC to the battery charger it would make a DC into the battery then you would be drawing off of the battery DC to the inverter which would be creating and converting again to DC or excuse me AC to run your wall appliance well every time you convert something there's loss involved I don't care what you're converting um, if it's energy if it's heat if it's whatever there's loss there there's, you can find it there's always loss so that's inefficiency <clears throat> the reason I like this unit is it's efficient because there is no loss one, I'm not wearing any appliances out. The battery charger would ha would only last so long. My batteries would be under strain all the time, constantly discharging and constantly recharging. So they'd be under strain. They wouldn't last nowhere near as long. Um, <clears throat> the inverter would always be under load. So once again, that's going to be giving off heat. That's going to wear out, and that unit's going to fail. Where this unit has all of those features, but <clears throat> it's just monitoring the incoming line voltage and only turning the inverter on when it's needed. So your batteries are happy, your batteries sustain, um, they're in a float scenario. So they'll last you 10 years, maybe longer, if you um, maintain them and keep after them. So I just wanted to add that in there, that um, although a good idea, and in a pinch it would work, um, this is a much more feasible system. Thanks again, YouTube.